Our trekking pole tents, all they're cracked up to be, or our freestanding tents, still the way to go when backpacking in the outdoors. We're gonna be doing a little experiment. I'm gonna be sleeping in the trekking pole tent tonight, and tomorrow night I'm gonna be sleeping in the freestanding tent, while our special guest, Mr. Dan Becker, will be switching with me. In this test, we're gonna be testing the 40th one-person tent along with the Dominion one-person tent. Both of these tents have a similar price point, similar fabrics, and would both be considered, respectively, in their own categories, ultralight. At the end of this, we're gonna compare the pros and cons and make a choice for which one we prefer. And we may not agree, so stay tuned to the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've never set this up in my life, first time ever. I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the best this tent has ever been set up. So. All right, this is the morning after two nights out on the trail. Me and Mr. Dan Becker here have switched tents. Uh, I slept in the trekking pole tent the first night, freestanding tent last night, and him vice versa. Put you in the grass here for you that did. They stuck me right next to the grass and mosquitoes. That was nice, thank you. <laughs> space and usability, which one wins out of space and usability? So, well, for space and convenience, I would have gone with that, the, the, the freestanding tent. But, however, this one was super, I felt this was lo really long. So there was, yeah. there was a lot of, and then, the ends here were like, under here where you got ventilation at the end, that almost acted like a shelf. You seriously? Yeah, yeah, I was like chuck, stuff chucking stuff there. back there. So <laughs> that was cool. I, but I didn't realize that till like the morning. I'm like, oh, <laughs> why didn't I think of this? For me, you know, like in a long wide pad, I do like having that space because I just tuck stuff up around my pad. But pockets in this one would probably be yeah. a winner there. Yeah. What about headspace? Headspace for sure, that one. For like, me, while, while I was sleeping, down? while I'm laying, laying down. down. But sitting up, I, no problem in, in this one at all. All right, let's talk about condensation. Which one's the winner of condensation? Condensation, surprisingly, was the trekking pole tent. But this one had unreal ventilation like I've ever experienced in a trekking pole tent. Like the whole... <laughs> Those bees like this jacket, I think. <laughs> um, I had zero condensation, really, with either of them, so... Really? I'm, I'm going negative on that one. Just, I mean, just neutral. Condensation for me, I don't, it's not like the end of the world. I just automatically assume like at least my sleeping bag is gonna get wet. And if I don't touch the walls of the tent, I'm usually pretty good. Like just yeah. avoid touching the walls of the tent. Uh, what about weather? I personally, my vote would go to the trekking pole tent. I have been in a storm with it. Um, I actually folded over a big three and a half inch thick pad, sat on it, still had headroom moved around, made some food in there, and then I even ended with some, some light yoga, so, you know. Why do you look taller than me right now? Because I do that. Well, maybe yeah. I'm slouching. I've had better experiences in the weather, I think, with a trekking pole tent than a freestanding tent. Trekking pole tents have always seemingly stood really strong for some reason in wind. You you're talking to me about one time in Texas you had one out there, big yes, winds. That was that was brutal. Yeah, so we had some really nasty winds. It was a wind it was a windstorm for probably three hours straight. My buddy had a semi freestanding tent. I had the trekking pole tent. His tent literally snapped in half. He was up at like two AM pole splinting it back together. And you know And you I know. just slept through it like a baby. No. Dan wasn't sleeping. He was up calling from his tent. Dude, that sucks. Was, I'm not coming to help you. That, that's, that's actually true, 100%. Yeah. That can vary definitely between, you know, full freestanding tent obviously is gonna have a little bit more stormworthiness than a semi freestanding. The misconception is that the, the, the freestanding tent is way more stormworthy. I've taken the worst weather I've ever had in a, a non freestanding tent, a trekking pole tent, and been just fine. So to me, it's more about setting it up correctly, getting the, the stakes in the ground. Ease of setup, which one do you give um, your preference to? Okay, <laughs> since I never even set up this tent, <laughs> they set it up for me twice. To sell it. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> delete that. <laughs> if I had to pick ease of setup, uh, I, I would have to spend more time with both, but I would probably say the trekking pole tent is easier to set, it's just less moving parts. It's just stake it out, trekking pole, tension, done. People always say that, like, well, I don't even have to put stakes in the ground. And uh, my experience is you never know what's gonna happen at night. Yeah, exactly. And I have had experiences where, oh, I don't need to put stakes in the ground. Next thing I know, my tent's lifting off the uh, ground in the corners. Yeah, for and sure. So I'm a big proponent of you should always stake out your tent. To me, they're equal. You still have to get the same number of stakes in. 
people don't believe that. Equals. I do. You have to have a win- He's that kind okay, of guy. Okay, okay. You can't pick a winner. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay this okay, is a versus okay, okay. video. This is where the Jeopardy theme song comes in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, that is there. There. This one's the tough one because maybe different conditions, a little bit easier, a little bit you know this or that. But I will also go with the trekking pole tent. Um, there I've is. got a really good system there down. There I just is. get those four corners in. I've got a lot of space. Um, to move the guy lines around and get them in the ground. And so um, that makes it really quick for me. I may tinker a little bit longer with the trekking bolt tent once it's up. Yeah, But to true. get it up, I, it is faster. All right, let's talk about weight and packability. Which one wins that? Duh, the trekking pole tent. It's like so obvious. That's why I've been making him carry this tent the whole time. He's not kidding. I literally <laughs> carried that. He, I think he put bricks in my backpack too. I'm about to check. I, I have to check his ego when he comes to elevation and make him really feel it. So I, I give him the heavy stuff. I take the light stuff. <laughs> yeah, there really isn't a comparison here. This, t this tent's going to be somewhere between, I think, about 2 pounds, 12 ounces. Whereas this tent over here is going to be about 26 ounces with everything. So you do get a lot of weight savings, but I would add to that that the, the packability of it is also just a major oh, factor for, sure. for me. All right, so we got to end this with picking one here, Dan. You've got to pick. These two tents are actually pretty similar in price. I give you the option to take one home. What are you taking? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. I, out of these two tents, I would take this one. Okay. I would take this one home, yes, for sure. I mean, it was just, because the experience in it was so good, especially with very little condensation, easy to set up, obviously strong. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. I have actually not slept in our Dominion for quite a while because I've been so polarized and attracted to the Fortius. And uh, I've built a ton of confidence with that piece over a lot of trips. So I'm definitely going home with the Fortius. Now, if I was to back this out and say, in general, all freestanding versus all trekking pole tents, of all the gear you've got, uh, what are you typically gonna go with? If you only could stay in one the rest of your if life. If I had one tent to pick one, forever. One uh, the rest of okay, your life. Okay, I would, I would say uh, a fully freestanding double wall tent because it would be the most versatile for any situation ever. Okay. Are you okay. mad? Don't be mad at me. Oh, no. But I think that's what I would say. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't even care if that's you're good. mad at me. That's good. I really don't. We're gonna cut that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for me personally, it's definitely the trek pull tent. I would take that anywhere from my trips to Alaska, my trips to, you know, high country Colorado, down to the desert. Um, it's been my go-to, but I'm always gonna put a little bit more of a premium maybe on weight because I'm trying to cover big miles. And uh, that's just like my style and what I love. So I'm definitely going with that because I cannot go backwards. Getting those stakes in the ground and you can have a good experience with a semi freestanding or a freestanding tent yeah. or a trekking full tent. Sure. Um, I would say if you're someone who's nervous about that, um, you know, set it up in your backyard a few more times, get a little more used to it and yes. bring a little extra guy line and stakes just in case and you're gonna be just fine. That is literally the best advice in human history. Please set up your tent before you take it out. <laughs> Please do that. You know what, don't. And then video it and then put it online because you'll get a viral video of how dumb you are. Because you're gonna look like a moron set up your tent when it's raining. I, Was that what you mean? I feel like you're talking about me uh, last winter. I did that one time, all right guys, one time. <laughs> By the way, both of these are great ultralight options for either of these tent setups. So if you wanna check them out, click the links in the description below. We believe in focusing on performance, not price point when designing our gear and can say with confidence that these are some of the best ultralight setups out there on the market. Uh, any last comments you've got here? No, oh, outdoor vitals gear, baby. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> Now we've made our verdict here in this video, but we'd love to hear from you if you have an opinion or have slept in either of these setups. If you also wanna learn more about trekking pole tents, we do have a video you can click right up here that goes through some of the myths of trekking pole tents. And with that, subscribe, and we'll see you guys out on the trail.